Welcome back to FD, where today we're looking at 10 icons who built their clubs. 10. Bela Gutmann. A Hungarian when Hungary ruled world football, Bela Gutmann played for his national team and an all-Jewish club in Vienna before switching to the first American soccer league. Later, he returned to Europe as a manager, coaching 21 different sides, including Ujpest, Porto and Milan, where he was sacked despite sitting top of the table. Benfica bought out the best in the man, and Gutmann gutted the squad ruthlessly, ditching 20 players and promoting from the academy. He signed Eusebio in 1960, despite competition from Sporting CP, and Benfica became the first of the team in Real Madrid to win the European Cup, picking up back-to-back -back trophies in 61 and 62. A devotee of the 4-2-4 formation, a noted hater of defensive football, Gutman eventually found himself at odds with the Benfica board when they refused to give him a bonus. He resigned in disgust, saying not even 100 years from now will Benfica ever be European champions. They've reached eight finals since and lost all of them. 9. Paul Doswell In honour of Sutton United's upcoming FA Cup fixture against Arsenal, we found room for their coach, Paul Doswell, whose reign in charge of the Nation League side has been unusual to say the least. Doswell has been involved with the club for nine years and over 500 games, and has actually refused to take a wage for his work. Instead, he funds the club through a sponsorship from his property development company, which sees Sutton's coffers filled with around £40,000 a season. So, he essentially pays the team to let him manage them. And Sutton's pitch is not the usual non-league sandpit filled with sheep and shit and syringes, but a cutting-edge artificial surface like that used by MLS side Seattle Sounders and the Portland Timbers. Guess who stumped up the half a million required for that? Paul Doswell. 8. Arrigo Sacchi The only Italian on our list is the great Arrigo Sacchi. Sacchi is best known for his work with AC Milan, taking over the Rossonieri for the first time in 1987. Just four years earlier, Milan had been in Serie B and had finished outside the top four since returning to the first division. At first, Sacchi was mocked for never having played football professionally, but famously slapped down his critics, saying, I never realised that in order to become a jockey, you have to be a horse first. <sighs> Burn. And in his first campaign, Milan won the league, conceding only 14 goals in 30 games. The next year, they won the European Cup and won it again the year after that. The team was so good that in 1988 and 1989, all three Ballon d'Or nominees were Milan players and the award was handed to a Rossonieri player three years running. Milan were a super club again and Sacchi was their architect. 7. Jock Steen Seven long years had passed without a trophy at Celtic Park when former player Jock Steen became Hoops manager in 1965. The last time Celtic had won the league, Steen had been playing centre-back, but success soon became a habit again. In Steen's 13 years in charge of the boys, he picked up 10 league titles, and most famously, the 1967 European Cup, beating the great Inter Milan side of Helenio Herrera in the final. In total, he amassed 31 pieces of silverware while at Celtic Park. His achievements were so extraordinary that he was in line to receive a knighthood, but was not awarded it thanks to media attention after four Celtic players were sent off in an intercontinental club match. Fittingly, Steen died on the touchline whilst managing Scotland in a successful World Cup qualifier. 6. Luis Aragones Vicente del Bosque might be the man who had the World Cup in his trophy cabinet, but the foundations for his outstanding Spain side were laid by the great Luis Aragones. Aragones had played for Atletico Madrid and won 11 caps for Spain, but as a manager he became world famous, spending four spells with Atleti as well as coaching Barcelona, Valencia and Sevilla. And when handed the Spain reins in 2004, he overhauled the side dropping Salgado and Raul and introducing a new short passing game called Tiki Taka. In the Euro 2008 qualifiers, Aragones almost lost his job after embarrassing defeats to Sweden and Northern Ireland, but the Spanish FA stuck with their man and were rewarded for the country's first international trophy since 1964. Del Bos took over after the tournament and wrote his name and that of Aragones into the football history books. 5 and 4. Bill Shankly and Bob Paisley John, you're immortal now, is what Bill Shankly told Jock Steen after Celtic won the European Cup. And coming from Shankly, it meant a lot. He had been Liverpool manager for eight years and had won two titles, and were going to win another before his retirement seven seasons later. Liverpool were in the second tier when Shankly arrived, and hadn't won the league since 1947. But the Scott bought young players and nurtured them, 
while improving the club's training facilities at Melwood, and by the time he left in 1974, the Reds were primed for European glory, and Bob Paisley took the reins. Paisley was in charge for less than a decade, but won the league six times and the European Cup on three occasions, the first coming in 1977. More than half the squad that beat Borussia Mönchengladbach in the final had been signed by Bill Shankly, but while Paisley acknowledged his predecessor's importance, he was clear about who was in charge and banned Shankly from the training ground. The two men made Liverpool a superpower, and even today, when Reds fans boast of being a big club, whether they know it or not, they're talking about the sterling efforts of Bill Shankly and Bob Paisley. Three, Brian Clough. Imagine Brentford, currently a mid-table championship team, sign a new manager. He won the Premier League once, but he's still just 40, and in his last job, was sacked after just six games. In his first full season, Brentford come third and seal promotion. The year after that, the Bees win the Premier League by seven points and then back-to-back -back Champions Leagues in the following two campaigns. Well, that's exactly what Brian Clough did with Nottingham Forest. He won three more titles and spent 18 years with Forest. And when his team beat Barcelona in the 1979 European Super Cup, Barca fans line the streets to clap their conquerors. Clough works wonders with Forrest, convincing a player to join by giving him a washing machine he'd nicked from the kit man, while another was signed for £2,000 while working part-time as a carpet fitter. He ended up scoring the goal that knocked Liverpool out of the European Cup. Clough eventually took Nottingham Forest back down, with alcoholism taking his attention off the pitch. But for nearly 20 years, he ruled Europe and Forrest defied gravity. 2. Alex Ferguson Matt Busby may have won the European Cup with Manchester United in 1968, but the Red Devils have been in free fall since, even getting relegated in 1974. When Alex Ferguson arrived from Aberdeen in the 1980s, the team had gone nearly two decades without a title, while seeing rivals Liverpool dominate domestic and continental competition. Ferguson took seven years to win the league with the club, but after that, the trophies came thick and fast. He ended up with 38 pieces of silverware at Old Trafford, including two Champions Leagues and 13 Premier Leagues, the 12th seeing United overtake Liverpool's record of 18 top-flight triumphs. Fergie's mantra throughout his stewardship was that no man is bigger than the club, but what he really wanted for was for no player to be bigger than him, and rightly so. One of the stands at Old Trafford now bears his name, a testament to the man who made United the biggest club in the world. 1. Renus Michels Build one club, you're a legend. Build two and a national team, and you're one of the most important figures in the history of the game. And though Johan Cruyff was the world's image of a football revolutionary, Rhinus Mickles was definitely his guide. A one-man club as a player, Mickles was Ajax through and through, winning two Eredivisie titles on the field and four from the dugout. Mickles had played under Jack Reynolds, and he now took the Englishman's idea that every player should be able to play everywhere to new heights. Ajax became known for total football, with teammates swapping positions and constantly moving in search of space. A European Cup came in 1971, and Mikkels moved on to Barcelona, where he again took charge of Cruyff and Johan Nieskens, and again won the league. Then, he managed the Netherlands to a World Cup final, scoring 14 goals and conceding one in six games. They lost to West Germany, but the clockwork orange reached new heights, which some would claim have never been touched since. Later, Cruyff would return to Barcelona as coach and train his own protégé, Pep Guardiola, so in a way, Mikkels invented modern football and then reinvented it. So, thank you for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this, then make sure you stay in FD by clicking here. And as ever, don't forget to like and subscribe.